Hey everyone, and welcome back to Don't Open That Door. I'm Justin, and I'm a pretty square guy. Yeah, you fucking are. I'm Nico, and uh, insert your own tool joke here. I'm Dan, and I'm a snail. And we are here today to discuss Uzumaki. This was directed by Higuchinsky, and it is based on the works of the legendary Junji Ito. So this is starring Eriko Hatsune as Kirie, Fi Fan as Shuichi, Hinako Saiki as Sakino, Shin Un Kyung as Chie, and Keiko Takahashi as Yukie. So we open with Kirie in the small town of Kurozucho. She notices that her boyfriend, Shuichi's father, is obsessively studying a snail with like a spiral kind of shell. So brushing it off, she then goes to hang out with Shuichi at a local park where he details that his father has actually been obsessing over these spiral shapes, you know, found in nature and in objects. And he states that he thinks the town is under the curse of the spiral. Shuichi's father's obsession grows until he eventually puts himself inside of a washing machine, which like stretches him out into a spiral, killing him. Well, it only gets better from there, right, Dan? That's for sure. So the spiral curse begins to spread throughout the town and affects the residents. Some people begin to obsessively consume water, becoming a little bit more snail-like in appearance. And at Shuichi's father's funeral, the smoke from his cremation billows into a really large, huge, spiral-like shape in the clouds. This drives Shuichi's mother insane and she's kept in a local hospital. At the hospital, Shuichi's mother finds that there are spirals everywhere, including her fingertips, so she cuts them off, and she must be kept away from any spiral images. Nico, things turn out well for her. I mean, they must, No, right? they don't. They really, oh. really don't. Oh. See, given that this is a hospital, they have diagrams of other parts of the body, and so that's already working against her. But unfortunately, Shuichi's mother hallucinates her dead husband, saying that there is a spiral in her ear, her cochlea specifically. He he doesn't give her the lesson like, this is your cochlea, didn't you know? But like, <laughs> that that's what he's talking about. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Um, and this drives her to kill herself by stabbing herself in her ears slash head. <sighs> At her funeral, the smoke forms another spiral, and Shuichi can see the image of his mother's face in the clouds. Oof. So at this point, the town has become even more taken over by the curse. People are getting more deranged and a little bit just not entirely screwed all together. And at this point, then the snail people begin to assume their final forms and crawl on the wall of the school. And one of Kyrie's classmates curls the ends of her hair into spirals that defy not only gravity, but the boundaries of common logic. And motherfuckers go wild for that shit. So, uh, Dan, how does this one end? Wrap this one up for us. So Shuichi gets the right idea and asks Kyrie if she is willing to leave the town, but she wants to check on her father first. Unfortunately, he's also taken over by the curse and drills a hole through his head. So of course, Kyrie is devastated, but Shuichi walks in and his body starts twisting into a spiral. He explains that the mm. curse has got him as well and that she should run away. Now the movie closes with scenes of how the curse has destroyed the town and it has a twisted ending, as twisted mm. as a spiral. Well done. Boo. Well done, Dan. That's beautiful. And that's beautiful for me because I wrote it. So well done. Well done to everyone but Nico there. So real quick, I want to go ahead and get into this, starting with the visuals, because the visuals are probably the most important part of this film. And I want to start with all the spiral imagery and kind of symbology throughout the movie. So Nico, why don't you lead us down that journey? So a lot of the imagery, like Justin was saying, has to do with this really simple idea, something spiraling unto itself, either inwards or outwards. And the idea here being that it is sort of hypnotic, even that it is never ending. That's the kind of vibe that all of the inhabitants of Kurozucho seem to be afflicted with. It is just the most fascinating thing in the world to them. It's it's like 
a drug almost and they just become more and more obsessed with it to the point that the town is itself sort of contaminated and you can see that in these little visual aberrations that happen throughout the film at multiple parts where it'll look like something's not quite right like maybe the the film got a little warped or something but actually the world is spiraling in itself and these little just dots on the screen and i personally think it looks really cool i see i see Another kind of visual aspect I wanted to talk about here was the cinematography. So immediately when you start watching the movie, this movie has a lot of really unique camera angles. So it makes, especially at the start, it makes really good use of kind of a first person kind of view. So it looks like, you know, there's a part where Kyrie is talking to somebody who's like selling her some food or whatever. And the camera shot of Kyrie is like as if you were the vendor looking at Kyrie, like dead on right in front of the camera, which we really don't see that angle used. You know what the best way to look at it is? If you've ever seen a Bruce Lee movie, um, particularly like Enter the Dragon or something, sometimes the camera would go into like a first person point of view and like Bruce Lee would be kicking at you or like the camera. It's the same yeah. POV it uses there and does it multiple times with Kyrie, the grocer who sells her the stuff and a bunch of other people. Also, sometimes this movie will do just like kind of silly effects. There's one where Shuichi's dad, he like is like, you must make your own spiral. And then he starts to spin his eyes. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden his <laughs> eyes get all big and googly and he's still like spinning his eyes. And I was like, all right, that, that's that's a that's a might bit silly, mate. But, you know, I want to also get your take on it, Dan, visually. How would you feel about the movie? Definitely a lot of really odd, uncommon camera angles. That's for sure. Like you said, it's mm -hmm. the first person or like there's a lot of times where the camera gets really, really close. So yes. like the, 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 the camera shot will just be of somebody's like cheek or something. It's so zoomed in that it's only showing like a small portion of their face and just weird angles of that too. And then there's also a lot of like subliminal uh, different spiral kind of shapes places. So there's like numbers sixes and nines just kind of randomly thrown nice. around there. It is pretty nice actually. <laughs> and I noticed too on, I, I caught on two shots and I looked it up later. There's a handful of shots where, and I think Nico was kind of mentioning it too, where the they actually just like digitally added a spiral like the the film is like warping in a spiral yes. shape yes um and it looks i mean it's obviously not part of the actual film and it looks like it's been added but it's a really interesting concept to kind of go in and add like a, a random spiral that you almost don't catch and then you're like wait is that a spot yeah it is okay um so there's a lot of really subliminal just spiral things and also like one of the first scenes that you see like Justin mentioned there's like a, a guy trying to give kyrie some food and the first shot you see of him is normal. The second shot, he's like coming off of the side of the screen. And then the third shot, he's from the left side. And then so it's like right up and down and then from the right and then from the left, almost like a, a spiral kind of thing. Yes. In the cinematography. Yes, that's actually true. Um, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't think of it like a spiral, that's but it was. Sick. Yeah. It was. So like, was. I think that's like the second scene you see, like two minutes in maybe. And that's right so Right off the rad. bat, they're kind of getting you used to that. Did anyone else like start seeing spirals in like everyday life after you, yeah. after you watch this movie? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm still looking at spirals. I have a slinky like right next to me and it's <laughs> spirally. I was watching this movie with Bonner and he literally was like, wait, because like I was like cooking some food or whatever. And like the bottom of the pan oh, is like a, yeah. is like a spiral. Ha, and I yeah. was like, oh, shit, you got me. But I want to go ahead now and talk about some audio choices. And I will say this. If anyone's ever played like an old school RPG. Oh, yes. You know, like yes. that music when they're just like in the beginning, especially when they're in like the mm -hmm. open town. I was like, bro, this is the starting town RPG music. Straight That's up. That's yeah. literally what this is. It was interesting because the the tone of the film changes wildly throughout like there's parts that's comedic basically and there's parts that are just like really dark and it's like whoa whoa it's like all over the place and i kind of struggled to really grasp it all like the full package it was giving me but 
I mean, Dan, what did you think about the audio? Did you have any trouble taking the package, Dan? I had some pretty package. major trouble with the full package. Yeah, actually. Mm. I'm not used to taking the full package, just the tip. But I'm glad you mentioned video game music because I was going to say the same thing. It There isn't a whole lot of music in the movie. There's It's a lot of just silence or, well, not silence, but a lot of just like Foley kind of stuff. But the music that is there is very much RPG. Like there's definitely music that it sounds like, you know, when you're playing like an RPG and you meet like the weird scientist guy who dresses up like a clown or some weird shit. (laughs) And then the music is just really like goofy and just weird. It's playful, yeah. Yeah, and that was there. Or like, I I think there was a time when there was a, I think the first time you see smoke in the sky, like as a spiral, maybe the second time, there's like this like organ type music. And I felt like I was about to fight like the boss of the game or some shit. <laughs> I like, love that shit. Like it, a lot of the music just felt like video game music to the point where I actually looked it up. And one of the two composers has done music for Super Smash Brothers and Earthbound. Mm. So, Yo, that's sick. Uh, not quite the same kind of music necessarily, but still video game anyways. For sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. Now, Nico, anything that you want to add to our discussion about audio? Um, no, y'all hit every nail that I wanted to hit. It sounds, and one thing to keep in mind is this was made in 2000. So just, if you understand the the time it was made, a lot of, it, it doesn't sound like it was made in 2020, but that's fine. Yeah. Now, since we already kind of hit the nails that you wanted, I'm going to give you something else. Ooh. Can you talk a little bit about the overall tone of the film? I already said that, like audio wise it could vary but the tone varies also as well throughout i want you to talk a little Mm -hmm. bit about that so i think the the main sort of tone that higuchinski was going for and by extension somewhat of ito was this overwhelming feeling of just powerlessness and hopelessness there is this impossible curse that's going on in the town and it is contaminating literally every aspect of their life and the thing that is i think the most representative of that is that there's no real logic to it there's no real any kind of like oh this is why this is happening it's just it's a it's like a virus almost it literally takes over everything and becomes their natural way of life slowly but surely now this does come with like you all were saying some moments of levity that are frankly there's a couple moments that are just straight up hilarious in this movie but for the most part i think it is i think that higuchinski was trying to create a movie that was dreadful but not in a bad way but like makes you full of dread Mm. all right now dan do you have anything you want to add to the tone there i think personally nico spoke a lot of what i was trying to say there my only personal thing is that i thought that was sometimes to the detriment of the film sometimes scenes would change really quick like there's a scene where Uh, there's a reporter guy who's trying to kind of solve the mystery of the town and he runs over one of the students (laughs) and then bam, all of a sudden we're at this lake and, and like, yeah. And like Shuichi is hugging Kyrie from the back and saying, I'll always protect you. And I was like, Whoa, you guys got over that really quick. No cops, no fucking, no. Yeah. Like this dude just ran this. yeah. Yeah. They get over it real quick. Not just that, but other ones too. Like real dude quick. was in the car. I get mm-hmm. the part of it is down to like the effect of the spiral, but there was one part where like the people were turning into snails and the reporter was asking a chick. She was like, are, are they turning into snails? And she was like, yeah. And he started growing this shell from his back, but it was such a cute pattern. I just saw it and I was like, oh, <laughs> and I was like, bro, bro. That's what I'm saying. It gets into every aspect of their life. Like, the townspeople think it's a cool, cute symbol. Like, it's so fucking kawaii, man. That's exactly what it is. But it's really kawaii. Well, all right, then. Big difference between cute and scary, bro. I'm, so, I'm going to go commit uh, ritual Sudoku. So, but Dan, tone on your part. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have too much to add there. I mean, I, I think it, it was kind of all over the place and... 
One thing that really tripped me up, and Justin had pointed this out before I watched the movie, and when, when as soon as I watched it, I was like, oh, yep, is there's this part where Kyrie is, is buying food, and then as a transition sound, it's like this, like, marimba sound was like boo, 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 boo. <laughs> like you would hear in like a like like old batman like yeah. adam west batman sure kind of like yeah. thing and it's like what the fuck is this like <laughs> there's no other part of the movie that sounds anything like that at all i think more movies should do that honestly <laughs> maybe i don't know but there and there are like little things like that that kind of like sprinkled throughout the movie that just imagine that in midsummer yeah, that would be fucking <laughs> weird. The, the scene where Christian is just being burned alive and they go <laughs> and transition to Danny smiling. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well done. Well done. Uh, uh, yeah, that I would have enjoyed that in that Ooh. movie, actually. I think that would have made the movie better. So, Dan, I want to keep the conversation going here a little bit, and I want to talk to you about what kind of horror this is. So, Nico, uh, ready your weapon of choice, whatever that may be. Okay. Uh, Dan, okay. you know, you grab your suit of armor, Got and armor. I will I will grab my, my flame shield. So, what kind of horror is this? We'll get this out of the way right now. It's not prestige horror, but... No! But, Dan... No! No! <laughs> no! No. We've all no. determined the no. The no's have it. It's not prestige horror. So now, Dan, what kind of horror is this? I think it's pretty straight cosmic horror. I think yeah. we have something that's happening in this town that is driving people insane to the point where even just... In snail, more like. It's in snailing them. Okay, that one works better than mine. I'll give you points yeah. there. So I, I think, you know, I think if you swapped out, you know, like an ancient deity as old as time itself for yes. a spiral, it would be the same thing. You know, people look upon the spiral and get mesmerized by it and driven insane just by the spiral itself to the point where they're harming themselves and weird shit is starting to happen and it infects the whole town. And I think that's pretty cosmic horror, just the whole like, something there that is just so unfathomable that it drives you insane. So you know? that is pretty much how I saw it as well. However, there is one alternative possible take. So it is described as a curse often. And I think there is there is something to be said for it almost being like a pseudo kind of almost like spiritual possession flick almost. Because this curse is... But like on a bigger scale, I guess. Yeah, because this curse mm -hmm. is a snailing the town. Um, see see what I did there? I got yeah, mine too. Going. I, I, I got mine too. Yeah. So it's doing that. And, you know, even there's a point where Shuichi tells Kyrie, he's like, shit, it's got me. Like, I was good, but now I'm not. And he seemed like pretty <laughs> in his so right mind. Like, ah, it's got me. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, that's literally what he said, though. He yeah. was like, oh, shit. Like, he acted like when, you know, like, you're playing Fire Emblem. Dude, all right, it's got, like, a 60% chance to hit. Ah, fuck. Well, goodbye, Elwood. But no, so <laughs> I think that it's just one of those where that's another alternative. I think given my background in horror, I like the cosmic horror approach, I think, a little bit more than the curse. Just because I feel like it's the madness aspect and the fact that bizarre things become the norm. I think that kind of drives me more towards the cosmic horror side of it. But Nico, I'd be interested to get your point. It's cosmic horror straight through and through. But I will also say this. This might be uh, rushing ahead a little bit. So you you just feel free to stop me if you want. It is also very much an adaptation. Mm. Adaptation of what? Like of Uzumaki by Junji Ito. Gasp, shock, and awe. Like it is something that functionally is a recreation of the actual original art like we were talking about earlier with the shot that sort of like encircles kirie and the the foods vendor all of that and other things are recreations from actual shots within the the manga itself so at its core i think 
yes, it is cosmic horror 100%, but in terms of its delivery, I think it is also just a very intentional recreation of the the manga for, for with the most part anyway. All right, and you know, Nico, I don't want you to stop there for Dan and I are both peasants, but you are a man of culture and <laughs> you've, you've read the manga. You are a manga I reader. I have. I have, and I am, yes. I I read the manga yesterday, and I watched the No, 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 you read it You read it last year. Before, you I read, read it last it. year. Last year. Oh, yes, I read it last yes. year. And, yes, yes. Uh, in, back in those ancient days, in fact. And then I saw the movie today. And I was really surprised at how good of a job they did. In general, the things that they displayed, they could. The biggest difference i will say between the two is just that i i think in general the manga is much better no mm -hmm. surprise necessarily but also there is so much more detail and graphic imagery and descriptions in the manga it's nuts the line art that we see in a bunch of these sort of like page turn reveals that just stick out at you is both labyrinthian and immense and terrifying all in one we also get more descriptions and context of various characters in kurozucho for example at the beginning of the movie there's this kid who just keeps fucking trying to surprise kiria <laughs> and attempts to get her to be her, his fucking girlfriend or whatever and coincidentally he's the same one who goes i'll make sure you never forget me Des, and then just like eats himself into my man's front axle and just like spaghettifies himself you get more context for who he is and he's also just like more terrifying in different ways that we don't get to see but on the whole the the biggest thing that i noticed about the the sort of delivery of both of them was that it almost appeared a little bit like a slice of life anime kind of thing where we would get more episodic beats like, oh, this is what's happening today at school or, oh, this is what's happening today at the grocery store or whatever. It didn't seem like there was necessarily a main plot through line aside from just the fact that it happens centralized around this town. And I think in a manga, you get more of that sort of division clearly because it's broken up between chapters. How do you think they did, given that the manga wasn't done? Like, it was still being, you know, like, released and written and stuff while this was coming out. How do you think they did with the ending, basically? Do you think it captures the spirit the same way that the manga did, or are they totally different? It's They did as good of a job as they could, and this also comes into the fact that this was made in, like, 2000. There's some stuff that just, given the sort of fidelity of the other visual effects they just straight up couldn't have done there's just no way it would have looked even remotely like it fit in with the rest of the movie i would love to see the team behind annihilation give this a shot um and if that doesn't entice you more than anything else go read the manga it's really really good but it is a different ending kind of categorically in that it lacks one major scene but they kept most of it at hand the only other thing i can think of is just that the final end in the manga is much more bittersweet than in the film all right now dan i want to broach your mind a little bit Kind of hearing from nico talking about what the manga was about and how that was in the movie as well what do you think this movie is trying to convey? Like, what is the purpose of these scenes, of the images we're seeing? What is this movie trying to convey? And do you think it's effective at doing that? I think one of the big things it's, it's trying to convey is a sense of unease. Mm -hmm. And I think kind of from the get-go, there's just so much like spiral stuff and sort of, smaller weird things that happen that you're kind of like put off a little bit and you're like oh this is kind of weird and then of course as the movie goes on they happen more and more and more and even when people start dying it, like it's not even like a holy shit that was brutal or i mean maybe a little bit but it wasn't like oh my god that person died it was more of like wow that's unsettling mm -hmm. at least that's kind of how i took it what i got from it and i think it's relatively successful at that 
But I think the, as we talked about the tone changes, I think kind of interrupt that for me. So some of those just weird transition sounds or very video game-esque music kind of, sometimes it's a little bit, especially the music sometimes is a little bit unsettling in and of itself. Even though like if you were listening to the music by itself, it wouldn't be unsettling, but the music plus the visual that you're seeing can be a little weird. And so sometimes I think it was effective, but sometimes the tone changes are just a little too abrupt, too much. And it just kind of takes me out of it. And I remember, oh, hey, I'm just watching a movie sitting on my couch or whatever. And then I have to get re-unsettled, if that makes sense mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're actually going to kind of get into a little bit of disagreement from my end. I personally don't think the movie was really all that great at implementing that kind of dread you were talking about before, Dan. Mm -hmm. And part of it is because I think the transitions between scenes and set pieces, they would just like happen. Like, for example, Sometimes when Kyrie... With marimbas. Yeah, but like <laughs> when Kyrie sees, you know, um oh Shuichi's dad go through the rinse cycle, like <laughs> she What is funny about that? <laughs> you you couldn't say die? You couldn't say like expired. <laughs> Did you say expired? When Shuichi's dad expired. I mean, oh, that's even worse. That's more poignant than saying my dude was like a fucking bounty dryer sheet. What? No, you put your bounty me. dryer sheets into the rinse cycle? Yeah, I'm, I'm all fucked up. Don't even, don't even worry about yeah. it. Look, just yeah. MO, move yeah. on. Pick don't up open yourself. that door, fam. All right, I will. <laughs> so yeah, like she just... Like twice in this movie, she just like faints away and then we see her the next day and she's like, yeah, that sucked. And it's just like, <laughs> all right. Like Shuichi loses his mom and dad within like a, a fucking week, maybe a couple days of each other. He seems pretty balanced. Dude, he seems pretty balanced. When his dad died, Kyrie was like, are you okay? And he was like, yeah, I figured it would happen. <laughs> 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 Called it. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, bro, what the fuck? Like, the only time Shuichi ever seems bothered is when his dad's, like, yelling at his mom. Mm -hmm. That's the only time he ever seems bothered. That's one thing I will say the manga does a lot better. They give a lot more character depth to the main cast. I was going to say, a lot of them seemed, like, really, like, emotionally flat at times. Like, unless Kyrie is saying, like, hello to her father or something like that, also, yo, I hate to say it, man, but her character is brain dead. Like, these things are happening in this town, and she's just like, okay, sure, yeah, that's normal. <laughs> and, like, I'm just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, she witnesses a dude get, like, you know, like, run over like Frogger, and then her response is to just be like, we're going to go to this lake now. And I'm going to get a back hug. They had to reminisce. From my boyfriend, not boyfriend. And yeah, that's what we're going to do. And like, did you not notice your dad was losing it? And you stepped into his workshop and it's surrounded by spiral imagery. Yeah. Everything's fine. Everything's yeah, fine. Like, oh, we're good. He was just here. You were just at school. How do you know he was just here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, well, I'm going to save my, the rest of my stuff for, for the end. But yes, that's why I think it wasn't really super effective but but i do want to very quickly so this movie you know uzumaki spiral did not get the traction of a lot of other japanese horror movies that made it here in the states now granted a lot of these horror movies also had american remakes where if you go back and witness our discussion on that i think it was dan or nico definitely not me who made the point of saying that these remakes could open you up to like going and exploring those other ones. Yeah, that and was I think me. this might be do, bitch. Oh, well, here's some extra credit. Cause you were right. Like if you look at it, Let's that could be it. a big reason why a lot of people didn't really see this one. You know, like Uzumaki is kind of like a little lesser known than these other really big ones like Ringu and, you know, the grudge and whatnot. So, I got to ask, 
how does this movie weigh up with those two? Do you think it's, I mean, I'll give you my take right now. I think it's a little more avant-garde. I think it's a little less conventional. And I think in terms of recognition, it's possibly the movie suffered a little bit because it is a little harder to grasp. Things are, I, all I can say is a little bit less conventional. But Nico, how do you think this stacks up compared to other Japanese horror movies? You took the words that right out of my mouth. The the one thing that keeps coming to mind is when we reviewed, and now that we've reviewed both The Ring and you know uh, the original Juon as well, A Curse Grudge, I think the thing that was the most striking to me about the difference here is just that when we were reviewing Juon, I described it as like almost like a progressive rock album. This one is more so it's like that, but even more. It's very, very different. And personally, I really like that. I've gotten, you know, flack from you in the past over having a place in my heart for other such movies like, oh, just off the top of my head, maybe like ghost stories or something. I don't know. Maybe check let's that not out. Start this. No, maybe. Let's <laughs> let's not start this here today. So keep going. But no, it, it definitely is weird, and I completely understand why some people don't really vibe with it. It is definitely more of an acquired taste, I will say. And I don't hold it against that. I, I don't hold that against it. Yeah. I'm gonna say for Nico's music metaphor, if that other, you know, it was like you said Juan was like prog rock. Yeah then I think this is acid jazz and uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's just, yeah. it's just, it's just not, it's just, I think it might just be acid. Uh, go ahead, Dan. <laughs> no jazz. Go ahead, just Dan. Acid. How do you think it stacks up? How do you think it stacks up? I don't know. I, I don't, I, th I think because of its avant-garde acid nature. Yeah. I, I think that's harder for an international audience to grasp. And by international, I don't mean as an American perspective. I mean from the Japanese perspective. So international would be American, if that makes sense. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Like, basically saying to the Japanese audience, the American perspective is the international oh, perspective. Oh, right, oh, certainly, right. yeah. As opposed to the opposite if it was an American right, movie. Right, right, right. Okay. So I think that when you are watching an international film, there's even subconscious barriers to kind of push through, you know, mainly language is really the big one. And even if it all makes sense to you and, you know, you're reading subtitles, you're cool with it, you get it, whatever, like it's still sort of like maybe a subconscious thing that you have to kind of push through. So I think when you add that on top of the avant-garde nature, there's not as much to grasp for an international audience. Or there, there's not as much for an international audience to grasp onto, and there's just too many barriers to to, to hold onto, I guess. So I, I think that's one thing that helps stop it from getting out to America and uh, other countries as much. And then I think just the avant-garde nature again probably didn't make it quite as popular in, in its own country in Japan as well, just because that style of film, even you know American movies, aren't as popular. So. Um, you know, watching The Grudge or Juan and Ringu, there's a lot of concepts and in, in, in whereas the, the location might be different and the language might be different, but I think a lot of the themes and the concepts and, and the culture is very similar. And we can look at that, watch it and grasp it and go, yes, I understand this because I experienced this kind of stuff too. But on this movie, I don't think we really get that as much. No. One scene that really brings that to light is where the reporter is talking about the mirror that uh, Suichi's dad, Suichi's dad mm -hmm. had put in the yeah. washing machine. And then he was like spelling out mirror or something like that. And it was like, there's mirror, but there's also the word dragon or dragonfly or something like that. And he was like, yeah, it's, it's the same word, but like different same pronunciation, yeah. but like different characters. Mm -hmm. And that was like, it was like a massive, massive deal, but it was like, oh, it's a revelation. Oh shit, look at this. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there the whole time like, I take your word for it, dog. Like, <laughs> So I got a quick question, sort of a little bit off topic, kind of regarding that scene. The, the reporter's kind of doing a bunch of research to figure out where this obsession with spirals is coming from, what's going on. Right. And then he kind of finds the answer in, in that sort of, I think it was serpent was the the other word that yes. was, was yes serpent you know, sorry yes thing. yeah 
and he's he calls Shuichi and he's like, "Hey, meet me at this this lake." Uh, you know, I, I think I understand, but he gets into a car accident before, so we never actually find out what the big reveal is or why this is all happening. We kind of get like the beginning glimpse of it, but we never really yeah, that's get true. the explanation. How do you feel about that? Like, I mean, I, that was very obviously purposely done. The fact that at the end of the movie, we still don't really understand why any of this is happening, even though we may have had an answer. It just didn't pan out. How do you feel about that? So me personally, I didn't like that. And I say that only because normally I'm not a fan of too much explaining. Right. Mm -hmm. I think over explanation can be bad. But in this film, I feel like nothing was explained. The only thing I got out of it is spiral bad. And literally like people were turning into motherfucking snails and climbing up the school. And like news yeah. reporters were like, oh, shit, look at that. Crazy. Well, anyways, going back home now. And I'm like, whoa, 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 what? They actually like, couldn't go back chick, home, though. Like, once yeah, they got, she, yeah. Yeah, she she got murked, but like the plan was to go back home, and yeah, like and she was even like, yeah, wow. I hope the next story isn't that weird. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, huh? this just made your career. Like, yeah. what the fuck? So the second piece though is, I don't know. Like things just happened. Like this movie was things happened. The movie, and I didn't really necessarily vibe with that all that much. I needed like a little something to grab onto. Not too much. Just like a little something to grab onto. But Nico, the manga reader, the chosen one, um, how'd you feel about that? I actually didn't like it either because that wasn't in the manga. <laughs> so, oh. no, okay. Purists pull, <laughs> pulling a bonner here. Well, actually, in the light novel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the whole bit about like, oh, uh, yes, the, the serpents and the, the, the poison or whatever, the spiral, like that wasn't there. I think that was just a moment of we got to show the audience a scene where someone's tr at least trying to investigate this shit. <laughs> all right. All right. So now we're going to get to a very weird edition of what would you do? Oof. This adventure is going to take place in a small hometown. The three of us are in this kind of rural country village. So it starts off with like someone's dad, you know, like a friend of ours is starting to get real obsessed with spirals. Like, you know, like one of us goes to like deliver food to like his house or something like that. And this dude is over here, like toting around like mad spiral artwork and stuff like that. And the three of us are talking, how freaked out are you on a scale from one to 10? Are you like, bro, I don't know what the fuck. Or are you like, yeah, he's kind of weird. Bro, I've worked music festivals. I've seen some shit that doesn't phase me. Dan? I would probably just be like, oh, that was kind of weird. I think, like, after we left, I'd be like, yo, Just, Nico, what the fuck was that? That was weird. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> while we were there, I'd just kind of play along and be like, yeah, uh-huh. Oh, shit, you're right. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. Okay. All right. So, and that same friend is like, bros, like, this whole town is haunted, though. Like, I'm trying to tell you it's the spiral curse. And then, you know, um, his dad, you know, like I said, puts himself through the spin cycle. And then <laughs> fucking boom. Like, we all walk in because he's like, y'all trying to play some double dash. And we're like, yeah, okay. And then like we go there and we see this dude like like a jump rope. Like, what would you really do at that point in time? How would you feel about it? Yeah, if somebody stretched out like that, <laughs> I, I think my head would explode. Like, I wouldn't Bro. be able to <laughs> interpret what I'm seeing. Like, somebody just stretched thin like a fucking... I don't know, taffy bar, you just stretch it or whatever. Like, I can't, I, I wouldn't even be able to comprehend what, what's happening. Yeah, so to the audience, the visual of the father is, like, imagine you have, like, dough that you were kneading and you, like, you know, you, like, stretch it out. Imagine, like, you rolled it in, like, a thin line and you stretched it like you were about to make a pretzel. That's what the father looked like. Except instead of a pretzel, it was more like a, almost like a funnel. It was like a flesh-shaped mozzarella stick that was coiled onto itself. That's a great mm. description. The innards of a mozzarella stick. Yeah. You know how like when you were a kid, you didn't want to eat the mozzarella stick right away, so you'd bite around the breading? It was just No, me. I love mozzarella sticks. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Well, I'm saying like you want to save the mozzarella. Anyways, fuck this, fuck this. So <laughs> so scene two, we're at the funeral now, and this, the cremation happens, and then the, the body ashes and the smoke turn into a big-ass spiral in the clouds. The three of us are there like, oh, shit. How freaked out are you now? Scale from 1 to 10. 
I would make sure that I hadn't accidentally, like, ingested some fucking hallucinogens earlier. <laughs> then I would be like, okay, yeah, we need to get the fuck out of Dodge. That Dead, like, we're the getting the point, fuck out? Yep, yeah, that's the point where I will leave immediately. Like, I, you know, we're jumping in the car, we're leaving, and I don't think anybody <laughs> can convince me to stay. <laughs> There's nothing you could say if that were to happen. I don't give a fuck where we're at. <laughs> we're gone. We're just, we're just out. Yep. To and I guess the next state, two, 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 three states over, we're gone. <laughs> and I guess uh, last question here is now let's say for some reason, you know, Dan, like your car engine exploded or something. So we couldn't leave that same day. Now, let's say like the next day we are, you know, we go to work or something like that. And people are turning into snails and shit like that and climbing up the building. Better get you some salt. And like a coworker is over here and her hair is in like spirals and it's like stretching up a light post and shit. I mean, are you just like walking out of town at that point or yep. like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> just yeah. 180 degree about face. Don't stop walking. Yep. You're, like, you're shooting, shooting out a group text. Like we're out just yep. wherever you are. We're out. We're out. Like we got to mm -hmm. go now. <laughs> fair play, fair play, fair play. So I want to talk about the critic score real quick. I wonder what it looks like when they flush. Uzumaki. <laughs> Bro, next time I use the bathroom, I'm just going to be like staring into my toilet. Like, I, There should have been a scene like that in the movie, bro. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they missed a good opportunity there. Although maybe like if you like take like a dunk, like maybe like that disrupts the spiral. Like a real like, fucking depth charge. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Call that shit a depth charge, bro? You got blowback? Is that what you're trying to tell me, bro? There's, there's some recoil. Don't worry about it. <laughs> When you shoot the rocket launcher, you can expect some feedback. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, <laughs> no, you're not. I'm not. So on Rotten Tomatoes, uh, this thing has a 56% from the critics. Audience, not too better. Not too much better with the 57% from the audience. So if you guys could just real quick... Um, sum up your, your general thoughts, maybe some of your good parts that you liked and some of the bad parts that you didn't, and hit me with your score. I'm going to start with – I'm going to start with myself. Mm. Oh, so you do that. I like the artistic steps this movie takes. I like the odd camera angles. I like some things about the plot. Like I like how – the curse kind of invades these people and becomes normal. I, I like a lot of that. And I will always try and back a movie that tries to break away from the norm. However, I don't like any of the characters. None. Zero. Like, none of them are likable. One exception. The girl who she, like, styles up her hair in all the spirals... I, I liked her. Like, I thought she had personality. But everyone else, like, Kyrie is almost like a blank slate. She's so stupid. And Shuichi is, like, not better. Or Suichi, Suichi. Is it Shuichi or Suichi? It's, Shu it's Shuichi. I keep, I keep forgetting. Shuichi is not much better. Like, this dude is, like, the original, like, nerd at school. He's got, like, the glasses... I feel like he was at some point in the movie, like he was going to push up his glasses and like the, mm -hmm. the lens was going to glare or something like that. <laughs> like I thought that was going to happen for sure. But this dude sucks, man. Like how are you about to see like, and again, like I get it, but he's so flat the whole movie. He's just so flat. And I'm like, bro, I don't like you. The girl's father, this chick just got home. She got home late. It was like raining and shit. Hey, can you drop this pot off that I made or this, 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 like this pan? I'm like, you lazy ass, go do it yourself. Like you're, you're telling your like high school daughter to go back out into the dark. Like you go dickhead. And like, I just didn't like any of these characters. I was happy to see him go. I didn't care. I wanted to see the ways in which the curse could mutilate them and kill them and turn them into fucking snail people. So all in all, I, also, one thing I also didn't like, I forgot more that I didn't like, was the plot. It really did seem like they really tried to be really honest to the manga. Mm -hmm. The problem was it was too much like the manga at times. And I haven't even read it, but I felt like it was too much like the manga. Like 
it felt like I was seeing panels that yeah. would just change yeah. to change to other panels and things would just happen and people would die and no one would give a fuck. And I'm just like, what is going on? Like you have this one dude who comes to class covered in fucking slime. Like, bro, he's covered in slime. He's covered in motherfucking slime. This dude trips him and slime fucking explodes up onto the dude. He's like, you fat fuck. And I'm like, bro, bro, come on now, son. There were certain things in this movie. I was like, yo, yo, come on. So for that reason, I actually don't differ too much from the critics here on this one. This one's going to get, for me, I think it's kind of generous. This one's going to get a 56. And that's with me bigging it up because I like the artistic endeavor. That's a lot more generous than I thought. Actually. Yeah, me too. So I want to go to you now, Dan. Now you got me rethinking my score. <laughs> just, just because I feel like I like it more than you, my score is going to be lower. But do it. That's okay. Wow. So I agree with a lot of what you said, Justin. I think the the artistic nature of the film and everything was cool and it was interesting to watch and it was definitely different but i think the the tone changes and and like you said some of the the character reactions and and things just don't really make sense and and not that it has to be hyper realistic obviously because people are getting stretched in and spirals and shit like that but just yeah somebody would die and then it's just like all right moving on i i kind of figured my father would kill himself what, what? Like, huh <laughs> so that kind of took me out of it i'm gonna give it a 45 i didn't mm. like i didn't really dislike it like you know if i'm thinking 50 is like uh it was okay like i i liked it a little bit less than that but i didn't think it was bad i just didn't really like it no 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 you know what you fucking right i just remember the one scene where the dude in school fucking fell down and bust his brains everywhere yeah they didn't even right? get sent home no. early no, <laughs> they just oh. mo move on. Like, Bro, so for and, that, I'm dropping my score to a fifty. You fucking right. And fucking Shuichi was <laughs> like, yeah, he probably jumped off a spiral staircase, right? And Kiri oh. was like, yeah. And they're like, in a spiral you. staircase, as he says. Yeah. This. You're right. It's a fifty for me, dog. Nico, go ahead. Let's, let's finish on a happy part. All right. So. Once again, predictably, I like this better than both of you, but that's fine. I do freely admit my bias in that I'm coming to this with the perspective of someone who has read the manga and like a appreciates the manga. So I objectively colored a little bit differently and my experience is going to be, you know, significantly different because of that. But all of that in mind, if you are someone who has read the, the manga, I think there is a lot to like here. There are some things that they change, um, some to a lesser degree, some to, well, mostly a lesser degree, actually, just the manga's better. Um, <laughs> and wow. after doing this podcast, like, I really do still enjoy it, but I've had to rethink a lot of stuff, and I don't think in good conscience I could give this a very high score. So I'm going to give this a... I'm going to give this a 66. That's a pretty right. spirally score. Okay, That is a spirally score. So do we recommend this to the audience? I do, but I know you're not going <laughs> to. I don't think so, no. No, I don't think so. Yeah. I think, now, that being said, I think there is a specific person out there that this would really appeal to. It's me, <laughs> specifically. Uh, I think if you are a fan of this kind of movie, I think you might derive a little more enjoyment from it. If you're a fan of, you know, Junji Ito, I think that that's going to automatically maybe like make you like this a little bit more. But for just, again, when we give this recommendation, this recommendation is for the just normal horror fan or like the normal regular person. Like, hey, I want to watch a horror movie. Is this a good choice? This isn't one that I'm going to recommend that you just, you know, casually watch on like a Saturday night. You know what I mean? Like, that's not what this is. So it's a no for me. But that's been it from Dan, Nico, and Jess. As always... Keep each other safe. Uh, try and stay away from spirals. And as always, dear listener, don't open that door. Bye.